run. Just run. Hi guys, daily questions. So, do you go to the gym? Drop your answers down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a sales update. So today we've got 10 sales, probably not in 10 minutes as usual, uh, probably more in about 15 minutes, but we'll see. I might not ramble as much today and I might get it done in 10 minutes. So it takes however long it takes, but I will endeavor to get it as uh, short as possible for you guys so we can run through and hopefully you can pick up a little bit of knowledge from some of the items that I've got to share with you. So first off we've got this vintage hand painted ceramic HJ Wood Limited floral design uh, floral design flower fruit basket, that's what I'm trying to say. $14.99 plus my postage. Nice little item here, I've had quite a few of these before, not from the same makers but various different makers but just a kind of just variants on the same sort of style um, and yeah I usually get like 12 99 for these I think this was in my £40 plus uh, commission ceramics job lot that I did show in a haul video a while ago um, so it probably cost me between about £1 and £2 in that job lot so not a lot at all cost to me and uh, yeah, fourteen ninety nine for that one. So pretty happy there. Next, we've got this um, vintage Royal Staffordshire ceramics white and blue wedding anniversary bowl. As you could see just on that picture there when I flicked onto it, I think it might have just had a little chip there. I can't quite see whether that's actually a chip or not, but I will have put it in the description if I have photographed it in the in the uh, item there. So uh, it's got all the wedding anniversaries on: first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then all the way up to ten for men. Does it go in like? Oh no, it goes all the way up to... Oh no, it does. It starts going in fives after about 15 or 20. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. I was photographing this item and I remember actually looking at those wedding anniversaries and seeing them and, and actually reminding myself of some of the early ones because... I know the main ones, you know, like the 20 and the 25 and the 30 and then the 50 and all the rest of it, because obviously my mum and dad and my grandparents, they, as I've grown up, they've hit those milestones. Um, but I didn't really, I wasn't aware too much of the early ones, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So just interesting, a uh, nice little bowl, uh, obviously reasonably collectible. Uh, you can see that I got 24.99 for it plus my postage. I can't remember what job lot this came in but it was some sort of job lot from the auction of course in one of the boxes i'm guessing it will have owed me about three or four quid maximum and that is going higher uh, sort of as an average cost expressed uh, of a job lot um but yeah it might even be less than that to be honest so 24.99 plus my postage pretty happy with that one next we've got this vintage waterfall crystal cranberry red cut glass small vase I don't know whether this was in that ceramics job lot, whether that was a part of that job lot, and maybe it was a part of another job lot, but it was from the same auction not long ago. I took an offer of 20 quid on this one, £20 plus my postage. Pretty happy with that. Again, probably not going to owe me a lot, a couple of quid, something like that, so not a lot of money, um, into 20 quid. More than happy with that. Nice little item. Lovely little uh, vase this, you can see it's like got that little sticker on Waterford Crystal, it's always worth looking out for glassware with the little stickers on and if you can get them for a quid or two you're probably not going to go far wrong, especially if it's a half decent sized piece and there's no chips or cracks and you know it's maybe a well cut piece as well, you're probably not going to go far wrong, I always look for the pieces of glassware with the stickers on because to be honest I don't know anything about glassware really I just like picking up what I do know about and the bits you know as I say the bits with stickers on and things like that I think I've had a few decanters where uh, they've, they've had like little acid etchings on the bottom uh, with the name on and obviously that's fairly easy to identify but when you're getting into the glassware that you have to identify it by the way it's actually been cut that's a little bit harder and you need a little bit more knowledge for that and I've not got to that point yet. So I just tend to stay around the sort of easier glassware stuff at the moment and then maybe I'll venture into the kind of slightly harder uh, to identify glassware at some point. But it's not really my field, it's not really something I have tons of passion for. I like picking it up, don't get me wrong, but... I don't like it as much as other stuff that I pick up, so it might just not be completely my field within antiques and collectibles. Next we've got 
an old favourite, really. I've solved this quite a few times. The Neil the Sloth Sofa Work Sophology uh, sort of TV advert plush toy. These are still going for around 13 quid. Seems like the market hasn't ever changed on these for a year or something like that. I don't even know how long it's been going, really, but uh, it just doesn't seem to have changed. Every time I get these, I get a consistent 12 99 from them. That's free postage. I paid 2 or £3 in a charity shop not long ago at all, but I can't remember whether it was 2 or £3, but it was one of the two. So it's a nice little profit on that one. Nice quick turnaround. Exactly what I like to see for from these bread and butter items. So especially when we're in the realm of toys and games and stuff. So yeah, twelve ninety nine on that one. Lovely little consistent seller. So if you if you see this at a car boot for a quid or two, definitely pick it up and um yeah, get yourself a little bit of profit on those. Next we've got this vintage fat lava West German ceramics. This is the I can never pronounce it. Is it shoe reach shoe reach? Uh, ceramic or ceramic or however you put I think it's pronounced ceramic uh, black and white large vase I got 39.99 for this plus my postage I mentioned in a whole video I, I did pay up for this I paid a tenner and I thought oh 10 quid that might have been a bit too much I did mention in the whole video but I said I'm gonna go I'm gonna shoot for 40 quid on this and we will see what happens uh, and yeah I got 40 quid plus my postage on that, so pretty happy with that. Yes, it was a bit of a higher investment, and maybe, I, I was, as I say, I was debating in the whole video, I was thinking to myself, mm, maybe I shouldn't have picked it up, all the rest of it, but still, I got some profit out of it, in the end, and it was still a half decent profit from, from the investment, but certainly if I was going to pick it up again, I'd want to get it for 5 quid, 6 quid, 7 quid, opposed to that 10 quid, um, but yeah, still nice item, you know me, I love picking up Fat Lava, it's not the fastest seller in the world, to be honest, unless you're going to get a really sought after piece, uh, you know, a certain colour or a certain style, then it might sell pretty quick. But if you're going to get the more standard pieces, it is going to sit for a while. But to be honest, this wasn't too bad. It didn't sit forever or anything. So don't quite know how long it took to sell. Maybe two or three months, something like that. So it wasn't actually like really long or anything. It wasn't a year or anything. So pretty happy with that. Next, we've got this vintage ceramic Staffordshire black and white uh, tall dog figure. It didn't have another one in it. Obviously, usually these come in pairs. I got 14 99 for this, plus my postage. Seemed to be quite a standard one here. There was no marks on the base or anything. I uh, didn't really know what to price this at, but I'd seen similar ones go for around 15 to 20 So I whacked it on at 15 quid. Went within a few weeks, so can't complain with that one. Again, just in an auction job lot. Probably cost me no more than about 2 quid, something like that. It wouldn't have cost me much uh, expressed as an individual cost out of a job lot. So yeah, pretty happy with that. 14 99 there. Next, we've got something that my granddad actually gave gave to me, so it didn't cost me anything. And he said, uh, you know, I've got this old newspaper. Do you think it's worth anything? Would you like to sell it? He didn't ask for any money back or anything from it. Um, and I said, yeah, that'll definitely be worth something because it's an 18... What, what, what was the date? 1886, and it's the uh, Illustrated London News, which, if you're looking for papers, the Illustrated London News, and, like, you know, that sort of age, you know, 1800s, you're going to get some money back for it, so long as it's in fairly decent condition. Now, this one did have a whip to the corner. It, you know, it did have a little bit of wear to it, you can see here. Uh, obviously, you would imagine this from the age, and obviously the fact that it's paper. Um, now, I didn't know what to price this at, because... I couldn't really see any ones of these available for sale. I really couldn't see any on on sold or completed. So I went for twenty nine ninety nine, and I was half thinking, "Oh my god, this is going to sell straight away." I've shot myself in the foot. I, I really did think that after I listed it, not straight after I listed it, but a few hours after I listed it, I thought, "Oh god, maybe I should update the price or something." But then it didn't sell. And then I thought to myself, oh, well, maybe I've got that. I just really wasn't sure on the price with this one. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, it didn't sell or anything in the first few days. And obviously it got picked off. I accepted an offer of 24 quid on this plus my postage. And that was after a few weeks of it being on. So I don't think I shot myself in the foot with pricing on this one. But you have got to be very careful with these old newspapers because... You know, it could be that it's worth a lot more and you just don't know it because there's not any uncompleted and sold. So you've got to be very, very careful. Um, but yeah, 24 quid plus my postage on that. I'm going to meet up with my grandparents on Tuesday and I'm going to treat them to a lunch out so that then I feel like I'm giving something back to them because, um, yeah, I don't I don't want to necessarily just take this money and, 
and just have it for myself. So I am going to do that. I normally meet up with them for lunch anyway, and we end up, you know, sometimes they pay, sometimes I pay. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna treat them to to a lunch out with the money. So yeah, really nice little sale. This I love selling newspapers. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, quite happy. So that's quite nice. Slow day at the car boot. Then you need the Ads Experience hoodie. This hoodie is guaranteed to get you the goods. Uh, next, we've got this Vintage Superboy uh, slash The Adventures of Superboy DC Universe comic books. Now, I bought these in a job. I think I paid... I can't remember whether it's 35 or 40 pound plus commission, but it was one of the two anyway. And it was a big box full of uh, full of these comics. There was a, I think it was a record in there as well, like Mind Warp or something like that. Uh, the re record was from the, uh, the band Mind Warp or something. I don't know. It was something like that. And there was a few other bits and bobs in there. What I did was I separated out some of the comics that I thought, oh, well, I'll list those individually. Probably separated out about 15 comics like that. I separated out the record and a couple of other bits as well. And then uh, probably got about 150 quid's worth of listed stuff out of that. And then I thought, right, I'm just going to job lot all these up because I can't bother deal, dealing with them individually. So I job lotted them all up, put them, laid them all out, obviously, in various different photos you can see. I did put... I did put some photos of some of them because you can see, see here on some of the spines they weren't in brilliant condition some of them were actually in these like pocketed folders you can see on this one to the far right um, which obviously uh, made the condition a little bit better um, but yeah they were in varying condition really didn't know what to list them at I, f I was thinking around the 50 quid and then I put an extra tenner on just I thought oh, I'll, I'll just whack them up to 60 quid so I whacked them up 60 quid plus my postage when I was listing them and yeah they sold within three four five days something like that so it, arguably I could have maybe got a little bit more for them but I probably would have had to wait a little bit longer so I'm just happy to get them out that then puts me in profit on the job lot um, and then all the other 150 quid's worth of stuff that's listed is going to be extra profit on top so I'm pretty happy with that out of a 35 40 pound commission uh, job lot purchase so yeah fit it 60 quid plus my postage there. Nice little sale. Uh, next, we've got this vintage silver plate. And I put silver plate in question mark because there was no marks on it. And I really wasn't sure. It could have just been some sort of metal, to be honest. You can probably see there that it kind of looks quite... I don't know, I don't know whether clean is the word, but it kind of looks... It just looks a little bit... I know what the word is. kind of looks a bit like chrome or something. It doesn't look particularly like silver plate, but I put silver plate in question mark and title and I sometimes do that if I, if there's no marks on a piece and I really don't know whether it's one metal or another I just put the metal in the title and just put question mark elaborate a little bit in the description and someone can make their mind up whether they want to purchase it from the photos etc and if they want to then brilliant and maybe they want to send me an offer through and maybe I'll accept the offer or whatever so yeah that's what I sometimes do so yeah vintage silver plate in question marks um, or in quotation marks metal five point can candelabra really nice little, little item this one the, can the, the little screw the little tops of it do actually screw off so you have to screw them in quite tightly so we don't uh, come off you know, like come away um but yeah this one was missing one of the yeah there it is this one was missing one of the tops i say it'd be screw in so obviously it must have just got missing at some point because i didn't see it anywhere in the auction job lot so you know in the box that it came in but i didn't get 24.99 i got 20 quid for this if it had the other top then i might not have accepted that offer and i might have waited for 24.99 but because it didn't have that top i thought to myself yeah, I'll let it go for 20 quid. Plus my postage, of course, of £6.49. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that one. Again, came in an auction job lot. Probably three or four quid cost to me, going a little bit high again on that. I, as I've mentioned in the past, actually, when I'm saying my like individual costs of things, I like to go a little bit higher. I like to round up a little bit. The chances are that actually expressed as an individual cost out of the job lot, this might have been even less than that. But I do like to round it up a little bit, so I'm giving you the highest possible cost it could have been, or the, the most it possibly could have cost me as an individual cost in a job lot. So that's what I always do. I know there might be some new people to the channel who aren't familiar about how I go about telling people the cost of items because obviously 
if you're not aware, I do a lot of auctions, so I can't really give you an individual cost on each item or like an, a, an exact cost without me spending a lot of time and going through and working it out for, from each item, from each job lot, and it's just not possible. So what I do is I just round up a little bit for you, and that's how I express it in the videos. So anyway, that's that. Next, we've got this vintage Super, uh, Super Zenith Lightweight 10 times 50 field binoculars with the little case here. Now, you know, a lot of binoculars a fairly standard 20 to 30 pound range that sort of range these ones weren't anything special you can see here 20 quid uh, got the you know everything's uh, working on them I tested them in the shop and I think I said that in the whole video actually when I uh, I think I showed these in a the whole video but yeah we've got the little caps on I think on these the caps were a little bit loose they wouldn't stay on properly I don't know whether they maybe were, weren't the right caps for the binoculars I'm not sure but they were they did seem a little bit loose um, but yeah came in this nice little case as well 20 quid on those plus my postage I paid a fiver in a charity shop so I did pay a little bit more than maybe I would like to I like to get these for well really I get these in auction job lots and they cost me two or three quid um, you know, I'd say it's an individual cost, but on, uh, you know, if a charity shop, sometimes I'm tempted to pay four or five quid for these, because I know, I, you know, they're fairly easy to list, um, fairly easy to pack, and uh, just a nice item just to, just to put on, really, so 20 quid plus my postage on those, and that is everything for today's sales update, so thank you very much for joining me, guys, if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing to the channel don't forget if you did like the video and you got some useful information out of this video then please do like it down below if you got any comments questions or queries then obviously put those in the comment section and i will see you in the next one so i will see you very soon guys i'll give you what i got the alcohol of that is flowing wild so grab yourself a can of mild